Welcome to Total MD. In today's video, we're going to do a quick review about creating an appointment for a patient, checking them in, checking them out, posting charges, creating claims, posting payments for both insurance and patient, printing statements, and looking at some other reports. So to begin, I'm going to jump to our scheduler. To schedule an appointment for a patient, I'm simply going to double click where I'd like to schedule them. So we'll say today at 11 o'clock. Once I open up my appointment entry screen, I just start typing in the patient's chart number, which is the first three letters of their last name, then the first two letters of their first name. If for some reason you're not getting the spelling of their name correct or their chart number correct, you can always click your magnifying glass here and do a search by last name or by first name, whatever information you do have handy. I'm going to choose an appointment color for George, set the length of time that I'd like for his appointment, and I'm going to go ahead and right here say that his appointment is confirmed, plug in a reason for his appointment, which I'm going to add follow-up to this reason list. To do so, I'll click the magnifying glass, add a new reason, and select a color for follow-up, and length in minutes. Save my changes and walk back to our appointment. I do not want to make this a recurring appointment. I am going to add some notes and save my changes. George now has a confirmed appointment for today at 11 o'clock, which is currently the time that we're in, as you can see by our red box indicator over the current time that we're in. So it's time for his appointment. We're going to select George's appointment, right click on it for options, change our status to ready to be seen. And now I'm going to collect George's copay and give him a receipt for that. So since the appointment's already selected, which is indicated by the blue halo around the appointment, I'm going to right click on the appointment and click edit appointment. I can also double click on the appointment to get into edit mode. Go to the options menu and choose enter a payment. It is George's copay that I'm collecting, so I'm going to leave the payment code as copay. I'm going to choose my deposit method to say he paid with a credit card and then punch in how much he paid. His copay, as you can see, is $25, so I'm going to go ahead and put in that he paid $25. I'm going to click Print Receipt at this point, which automatically saves that payment amount that I punched in. And I'll choose my walkout receipt since we don't have any charges to give George a walkout statement for as of yet. So as you can see, we've got today's date, patient copay, and the amount that George paid you. Then at the bottom, you have future appointments listed and the total of the payment once again. Keep in mind, the receipt is not a summary of charges for today. It's just a summary of payments that have been made. And then we've got our printer icon in the top left corner. So I've collected George's copay. Now I can change his status and he has been taken back by the medical assistant. So I can say he's being seen currently. The clinical staff would go ahead and do their work on George and then he would come back to the front and be ready to be checked out. So I'm gonna right click on his appointment, change the status to complete, and then go right to his ledger by clicking ledger here at the top. Now we have a choice to make. George was in on the 6th and has a series of charges and payments attached to that. We can continue posting charges to this same billing or same ledger if we'd like to, or we can create a new billing. If I click new billing, I'm going to have to enter all of the data that we've entered previously on the new billing number that we create, such as default diagnosis codes, facility provider, place of service code, etc. If I click copy billing, it's going to give me a new billing, but copy the old one so that I only have to edit whatever details have changed. The alternative is to not create a new billing and continue on with the same billing number and post additional charges to it, regardless of date of service. Depending on your office, that may make sense to do so, but you may want to keep their initial billing separate as a new patient from any subsequent billing. I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the same billing because this is a follow-up visit to the initial visit. And after this follow-up, when George comes back for a new or different situation, then I'll create a new billing. So all of the same diagnosis codes still apply based on what George is coming back for. Therefore, I don't need to create a new billing, but I could if I wanted to just segregate the two dates of service. 
So instead of doing anything with the billing, I'm just going to click New Transaction, and this is the patient's last authorized visit, and that's based on their pre-authorization that we sent to the insurance company. I've got today's date, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in my procedure code, and I'm just going to choose Outpatient Visit for established patient. And here I'll plug in the amount of money that we're charging since I don't have fees populated on my fee schedule yet. We did one unit of that code. Here is our default diagnosis codes. I'm gonna go ahead and say just the first and third diagnosis code apply to this charge. And remember to save this transaction, I could click the save button here in my options menu or I could use my enter or tab button to tab through the end of the line. And the system will save that charge automatically. I'm gonna also go ahead and click new transaction and add the patient copay charge to this account so that I can apply his copay to this line item. Save my transaction. And to apply that copay, once again, I'm gonna click on the dollar amount in blue up here at the top of the screen, which is my unapplied payment. I'm going to distribute that payment and choose to Today's patient copay charge of $25 to apply the $25 credit to and save my changes. And I'm ready to go ahead and create my claim for George. One transaction is eligible to be billed. Yes, I want to continue creating the claim. And no, I do not want to view the claim as of right now. So our claim is created. We have the patient's copay that we collected and applied to our copay charge. We have previous charges that we're still waiting on payments for. And up here at the top, you can see the total account balance left over at this moment. If George is curious what his total account balance is, I can go to print walkout and choose the walkout statement instead of walkout receipt. And here's a summary of his charges just for today's date. If I wanted his total account balance, I'm going to go to print statement instead of print walkout. And here I'm going to choose whichever statement is pertinent in this moment. George is a single account, meaning he's the only person on it. So I'm not going to choose any of my family options. We do have patient options here, and so we want to focus in on just this patient, not the whole family. I have print responsible statement with a credit card box. The credit card box is designed for the patient to enter in their credit card information and mail you that statement back for processing. We have a patient responsible statement with a zero balance. So if George did have a zero balance but wanted to have a summary of his charges, this is the option you would choose and it does not ask him to pay anything because he has a zero balance. We have a patient standard statement with detail and a patient standard statement with a zero balance as well. The difference between the responsible statement and the standard statement is the standard statement is going to ask the patient for the total balance of the account. The responsible statement is only going to ask the patient for the total balance on the account of closed claims only. If the claim is open and pending, it will not ask the patient to pay any money towards that open claim. The standard statement will show all charges regardless of whether or not the claim is open. So at this point, I would choose the patient standard statement detail because we just created a claim for some charges and George is simply looking for something that will show him his current account balance. Now, because his balance is less than 30 days old, if I try and print a statement for him, it's not going to generate. That's something really important to know. These statements run on a 30-day cycle, so you can only print a statement for the patient every 30 days. There is ways around this to where you can go ahead and print a statement, but keep in mind, statements are bills. You're sending that to the patient, asking the patient to pay you money. If someone simply wants a summary of their charges and payments, the better option is to choose Print Ledger. The ledger is going to allow you to capture all of the data on the patient's account, so all of their charges and payments, regardless of the date of service and regardless of the insurance status. So here's the amount we billed and adjusted and collected on each item, and then here is the balance per each line item. And then total balance is listed down at the bottom of the screen. So if George is looking for simply a summary of all of his charges and what his balance on his account is at the moment, this would be the best option to print and give him. And once again, we do have the printer button in the top left corner. If this account was more than 30 days old, 
let's say we're into the middle of December now, and we go to print our statements from the report section, George will get a statement depending on which type of statement we run. If we choose the standard statement versus the responsible statement, we're pretty much guaranteed to get a statement for George. The point in having these ledgers on a 30-day cycle is to eliminate patients from getting multiple statements within one month if you've already sent them one, which some offices will do once they receive insurance payment in and post those payments, they'll automatically send the patient a statement. So the goal is to save you stamps and save your patient some heartache from getting a couple bills within the same month. You do have a reprint statement option in here if you had already printed one statement at this point for the patient or one bill you can go back and regenerate that same one. Let's say some time has passed now and you've received an insurance check payment for the patient. Let's go ahead to our options menu under enter a payment and we're going to choose new insurance payment and adjustment. At this moment, you're gonna to wanna to have your EOB handy along with the insurance check payment. We can see the date of payment, the type of payment is an insurance payment, the company that's paying us, and the code for that insurance plan. We can go ahead and stick with check for payment. We do have a selection for credit card or electronic funds transfer payments as well. We'll plug in our check number and our payment amount for this patient particularly. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add George's name to this check in the notes section. What's really important here is once I click distribute or save, either option, this payment is already in your system. So if for some reason you get interrupted and have to stop what you're doing after you've clicked save or distribute, you just have to apply it to your patient moving forward. You do not wanna go back and start this process over again because you will post this payment as being collected twice. At this moment, I'm gonna hit distribute, which will save the payment, and it takes me to my EOB entry screen for Blue Cross Blue Shield. I do have my patient's name already pulled up here, and off to the right, you can see total check amount. So far, previously posted is zero, currently posted is zero, and so we have $135 of unposted money that we need to apply to the charges. This looks very similar to what your EOB should look like. You've got your date of service on the left-hand side, a claim number, the service code that you build out, and the amount you build. The remainder is the remaining balance on the patient's ledger per item. So this is frankly irrelevant when it comes to posting your EOB. Your EOB does not get posted based on the patient's balance. It gets posted based on the data that is depicted on the EOB. So we have a section to enter the payment for each charge on the EOB, any deductible that was applied, and what the allowed amount is. The adjustment will automatically populate once you plug in the allowed amount. You do have a space for an additional adjustment, should there be one or any other reason you need to adjust more monies from the insurance company adjustment standpoint. We also have a take back section if the insurance company had taken money from one patient and applied it to another. And then you can mark an item as a follow-up item if for some reason you need to follow up with the insurance company to find out why they paid you what they paid you or why they rejected an item. We do have a space for a rejection note as well if you want to attach a note code to a specific charge for further explanation. So let's go ahead and say that for the 99201 on date of service 11.6, we charged $50 and we received a payment of 45. The deductible I'm going to leave out for the time being and let's go ahead and say the allowed amount for this charge is 45 as well. So the insurance company paid us 100% of their allowed amount. Therefore, the computer automatically says adjust off $5 from this charge. 50 minus 5 equals the $45 payment and the $45 allowed amount. This is pretty cut and dry, so I have no reason to mark this as a follow-up item or add a note, a rejection note to that item as well. The next code down, the 00100, we charged $100 for that. Let's say we received a $90 payment, no deductible, and the allowed amount for that item is $100 as well. The computer does not calculate an adjustment because we are allowed to charge $100 and we did charge $100. So we do not have an insurance write-off to do 
in this situation. However, as you can see, we're going to have to charge the patient the remaining balance of $5 for that item. So perhaps this particular item is only covered at 90% of the allowed amount. We had previously written off $5 for that item, so that's why we have a $5 remainder showing here. I'm going to go ahead and mark this as a follow-up item just to show you what that does, and we can attach a note to this item if we need to. Perhaps the reason the insurance company didn't pay the additional $10 is because the patient's maximum was reached for the year. If that's the case, we can go ahead and click Insurance Max, and that's going to attach the insurance maximum reached note to this charge. I'll show you what it looks like on the ledger, and then we can remove it and play around with some other options. So once I have my money laid out, just like my EOB specifies, I'm going to go to my options menu and click post and close. It does show you one claim has been marked as paid, and we'll click OK, and it walks us backwards to our payment entry screen, and you can see payment amount 135. Unapplied amount now says zero, which is what we want. That means you completely distributed that full check. I'm going to close the screen and now we're back on the patient's ledger. So just to review, we have the 99201 from 116 date of service. We did an insurance adjustment of $5, a Blue Cross Blue Shield payment of $45. 50 minus 5 minus 45 is a remaining balance of zero. The next line item, we charged a 00100. We did do a patient adjustment or a courtesy of $5. We did not post any insurance adjustments, so that therefore says zero. We did post a Blue Cross payment of $90, and so 100 minus 5 minus 90 is a $5 remaining balance. And what's great about this is we do have our insurance max reached note with no additional coverage laid out right there. This will print out on our patient's statement that we send them so that the reason why they owe us the $5 is specified right there on the bill. We then have our patient charge for copay, and that item has a zero balance, so we're not going to worry about that item. That's also not an item that the insurance company pays. And the rest of the charges here are for date of service 11-8, and we, in theory, have not received that payment yet. I do want to point out, if you look to the right, we have the insurance paid column, and now for these two charges, insurance one shows paid. And now for these two charges, insurance one is checked as being paid. So we've effectively closed the claim on these two charges. Your charge on the ledger will always show up in black and any payments, adjustments, and notes will show up below the charge. Our adjustments are either going to be red or blue by default. If it's red, that means we're reducing money from the account. If it's blue, that means we're adding on an additional charge to the account. And then our payments, regardless of being an insurance payment or a patient payment, are always going to show up in green underneath, once again, the charge that they're attached to. If you look down the remainder column, you can see very easily what the patient actually has a balance left over from. So once we generate a statement for this patient, and if they call and start to ask questions as to where their balance is coming from, it makes it really easy for you to look down this section and say, well, we've got a $5 remaining balance. Look to your left to see where that charge came from what payments and adjustments have been applied to that charge, and give the patient a really easy explanation, such as insurance maximum was reached and no additional coverage available. With the new 30-day cycle statement, essentially you're going to want to wait until you send out statements for everybody else in the office once a month in order to bill him that $5. Perhaps in the meantime, you end up receiving payment for 11-8 date of service, and maybe he owes a balance for that too. So it gives you time to receive all the payments that you can up till that date that you send statements and also trains your patients to expect one statement once a month. If you did want to send him a statement before that 30-day cycle for whatever reason, you can go to the report section of your system, click here under search archive reports and pull up an old statement that you'd like to run that is not on a 30-day timer. Let's say George then receives his statement at whatever point you send them, and he sent in a payment for you to collect. We're going to go ahead and post that and zero out his date of service. So I go to my options menu under enter a payment. 
click New Patient Payment and Adjustment, and I'm going to choose how he paid us. He's no longer paying a copay, he's paying his patient portion. So I'm going to change our payment code to however he paid us. Let's say he sent in a check. Remember up here we do have a space to put in the check number and then the payment amount, which is going to be $5. Now we have a couple charges still on the account. So this is only showing items that have not been paid off or do not have a zero balance. Down here at the bottom of the screen you can see we have the button checked that says hide zero balance billings. So anything with a zero balance is not displayed at this moment. I can go ahead and click the auto apply button in the options menu if I'd like and it's going to take that five dollars and apply it next to the oldest item first that has a balance. If George paid us $15, for example, and then I click auto apply, $5 is going to go to the oldest item first, once again trying to pay off the old balances to keep the account as current as possible, and the rest of the money overflows onto the next oldest charge. If this is not where you wanted the money applied, let's say for example there are multiple charges here, all you have to do is hit your delete button inside the box you want to remove the payment from, and then you can simply click and type to add it to a different box. Obviously, we're not going to want to apply $15 to an item that has only a $5 balance because otherwise we'll create a credit on that particular item. So the concept of line-by-line -line accounting is you pay off each line item until it has a zero balance. That way you keep the account as up-to-date as possible and as clean as possible and it very much mirrors what the EOB does that you receive from the insurance company, except for it's doing that on a patient level. So I've got my payment of $5 posted here against the charge I want it to go to. Unapplied amount says zero, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Save Changes. Now as you look down the remainder column, you can see that each item has a zero balance up until the most current item of 11.8, which we're still waiting on the insurance payment for. Let's talk about adding a few additional notes that don't particularly pertain to insurance companies. So you may have a charge that you billed the patient, for example, this office outpatient visit. Let's say I want to go ahead and make a note that if the insurance company does not pay for this item, we're going to write it off. So I simply click on the code I want to attach a note to with the correct date of service I'm looking for, go to my options menu and click add note. It gives me a little drop down menu in which I can choose the note code and then I can double click this item where it says note in the description section and it'll open up an edit screen for me to type in a new description. Do not charge patient if insurance denies per doctor. This is not necessarily something that I'd like to print on the statement, so I'm going to leave off print on statement. However, if this is something you're trying to communicate to your patient, you can choose to print that on the statement so that they can see whatever is in the description line. You do have an additional note section below. This section does not print on the statement and is simply for inter-office information. So an example of a note could be, Alicia spoke with the doctor on 11-6 doctor had agreed that the follow-up visit would be free of charge to the patient as a courtesy if the insurance did not cover this item, then you add your name to the note. Perhaps you call the insurance company and speak with someone about a transaction. In that case, you may go ahead and type an additional note. Called insurance and spoke to Cindy at Blue Cross Blue Shield. She stated that the authorized visits will not cover follow-up appointments. So this is a really handy place for you to attach any sort of informational notes to specific procedure codes and dates of service. Then I'm going to save my changes and just below the charge we do see the note do not charge patient if insurance denies. So this is a way you can directly communicate right on the patient's ledger without having to go to different places to hunt down information regarding a transaction. It's literally linked to the transaction so all of the information is at your fingertips. So at this point we've gone through posting payments and adjustments for both the patient and the insurance. 
adding notes and linking those to our charges or transactions, printing statements for an individual, and now I want to talk just for a quick moment about deleting transactions. You cannot delete a transaction unless you have the security authorization to do so. That's assigned under setup and setting up security, and it is based on the level of security you assign to each user in your office. I do happen to have security clearance to delete items, and so the point I want to make about this is if I try and delete a specific charge, I select the actual code I want to delete and hit delete transaction, it asks me if I'm sure However, it does give you a little note that says this charge has payments or adjustments applied to it. Do you want to delete those now? So it does go ahead and delete the charge, but it does leave the payments and adjustments hanging out here unattached to anything. I went ahead and added back in that charge and I want to show you how to attach or move a payment or an adjustment to a specific charge. So what I'm going to do is double click on the code patient adjustment and down at the bottom of this account adjustment detail I'm going to click the paid to item magnifying glass. Now I can see the charge that I added back in the 00100. I click on it and select it so it's blue and I hit the select button and now this adjustment is attached to this anesthesia charge and save my changes. Again I'm going to double Double click the specific code I want to move or attach, click the magnifying glass, and choose the code I want to attach it to and hit my select button and then save my changes. If your payment or adjustment is not specifically attached to a charge, it is going to create issues because your payments will be floating by themselves here on the screen and it won't specifically apply to any one item. Because the system is set up to do line by line accounting, you're not accounting for the charge that that payment should be attached to. So you might get what we could refer to as a balance mismatch, which means in the remainder column, some items may have a credit, such as if I had left these items unattached, and some items will have a balance. So when you hit print statement, it's going to show that the patient has a credit somewhere and a balance somewhere. We want everything to reconcile evenly. So if you charge $100, at some point there should be a payment or adjustments totaling $100 attached to that charge. As always, if you need additional help on that, please contact the training department. I do want to show you a couple handy things on this ledger in order to help you reconcile ledgers if need be. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, we do have some additional options. I want to point out the view says all. If I click on the word all, it lets you select which items you're viewing in the ledger in that moment. So if you just want to see charges, patient payments, and any ledger notes, I can select those boxes and close the screen, and that's all it shows me now is the charge, the notes, and any patient payments. So this is a great way for you to isolate specific items that you want to look at to see how many patient payments you've actually received from the patient. I can just display payments only if I'd like to really cut right to the chase in that situation as well. So once I want to bring everything back, I just go ahead and select everything once again. You also have different sorting options, the payments with charges, payments with charges in ascending order, payments with charges in descending order, or sorting items by date or sorting items by date in the descending order. So that means that the most current items are on top and the oldest items are on bottom. I do want to point out that you have the option to view treatment planned items and I could uncheck view ledger items and this is how I could create a treatment plan to send in a pre-authorization to see what's going to be covered by the insurance company ahead of time. So if I were to do that, I'm going to click new transaction, I'm going to add in a procedure code, plug in the amount I want to charge for that. And keep in mind that the same default diagnosis codes do show up here because we're still on billing number one for the patient. I'm going to go ahead and save this transaction and you notice it disappears from our planned items. I'm going to toggle back to view ledger items 
and I see that item that I added right up here at the top, I am going to double click the description and inside the charge detail of this item, I'm going to change the status from completed to planned and save my changes. So now I have planned items for the patient's future visits and I could go back to view ledger items and uncheck view planned items. Now the next time the patient comes in, if I'd like to, I can post that item from their treatment plan, which I do see right here, the item that we had plugged in as a future planned item. Select that item and post the selected item. I do want to point out that by default, I do not have a fee entered on the fee schedule for that charge. So it gives me the option if I want to use my fee schedule or if I want to use the amount I entered. The amount I entered is 450, so that's what I'm going to go with. And I'm going to go ahead and post the selected item. And that will add that item to today's ledger, and it also created a new billing for our patient as well. Now that I have two separate billing numbers, I do want to point out I have a button to click Show All Transactions, and it will combine all of the billing numbers in one view. If you do not have the option to show all transactions in one view, the chances are that you're on the basic version of our system, and you'll have to toggle between billing numbers in order to see the different transactions. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the patient's ledger now and go to our claim screen and dive in a little bit deeper on the claims management end of things. As you can see, we have one claim listed here that does show paid. If you guys remember, we collected $135 from the insurance company. We also have another claim that we created today that does say that it's ready to bill. If you do not create claims per patient, meaning from their ledger, you can go to the claim screen at the end of the day and hit the Create Claims button here in the Options menu. It will tell you how many claims have been created and it will plug those in and update your claim screen. All of my claims say ready to bill, which means they all have the appropriate data listed on them. If we just jump to the setup screen real quick and go to modify claim pre-edits, I just wanna remind you that these are the details the system is scrubbing for on every claim to make sure the claim complies with all of this information. So if it says ready to bill, that means it has all of this information added appropriately to your claim. If you have claims that do say ready to bill, go to your options menu and click print claims or send e-claims. The ones that say ready to bill are the ones that will print or send electronically. If I select this paid claim and choose print selected claim, it will reprint that claim for me. But if I just choose it as a batch print claims, it's only going to print the ready to bill ones. I can select multiple claims to print or send electronically if I hold my control button down on my keyboard and click on the ones I would like to utilize and go to my options menu and either choose print selected claim or send selected claim. It's going to send all of the ones highlighted in blue. A couple more tips to use on this screen is we do have the option to hide paid claims. So since they're paid, you don't necessarily need to be concerned about them again. However, there is occasion where you receive an EOB that is asking for a take back for a paid claim. So in that case, we could bring the claim back by unselecting the box. And let's say we needed to resubmit this claim. To do so, your claim status has to say ready to bill once again. You do not want to delete the claim and then recreate the claim just in order to resubmit. Keep in mind that this particular claim is the history of what those transactions have been through. So deleting the claim deletes your claim's history for that item that it had even been billed in the first place. The only time you want to perhaps delete a claim is before you've ever sent it out. If you need to correct some details and it's simply easier to delete and recreate rather than updating several points of data on the claim form. Now that we are done with the ledger, I want to go ahead and take a look at our payment screen. If we click on payments once, it opens up the payment window for today's date. If you'd like to view a different date's payments, simply go to that date and select it, or you can always type it in. Keep in mind that the payment screen is gonna show you any payment that you've begun posting, whether or not you've completed distributing that payment onto the patient's ledger. So before you apply a patient's copay down into the patient's ledger items or to a specific charge, the copay is gonna be listed under the payment screen. 
And you may recall earlier I had mentioned that once you start posting a payment and hit the save or distribute button, that payment has already been recorded in the history of the system. The payment screen is the history of the system for all payments. So if you don't find the payment in here, that means you didn't post it or you may have posted it and completely deleted it. I can delete the date section here and show all payments at once. And I do have a handy option in my options menu to find unapplied deposits. If we had any deposits that had not been completely distributed, they would show up here in our unapplied deposits list. From there, you could double click the unapplied deposit and finish distributing it. So if you get started posting a check and hit save or distribute and the power goes out or you have to close the screen to get to something else and you forget to bookmark your screen, then you can always come to the payments window, pick up the payment by double clicking on it and finish distributing that payment. You do not want to start reposting it once again. If I go into today's payments, this is going to show me all deposits that we've received or all payments. I can edit the payment from here, delete the payment, and create a new payment from this screen also. If you do receive bulk checks into your office, this is where you'll go to post a bulk check payment. It's pretty similar to posting from the patient's ledger. The only difference is you post the check first and then choose your patients to distribute the check to instead of choosing the patient and then entering the check information. So it happens in reverse order. What we'd want to do to post a bulk check is click new payment from your options menu, put in the type of payment you've received, we'll say insurance check payment, choose your insurance code based on what group is paying you, and you can open up the master list of insurance plans by clicking on that magnifying glass. And this is a nice way to verify additional details if your check came from Dallas and not Moline. That may be something you'd want to know. And then you're going to punch in the check number you've received and the total dollar amount of the check instead of just the amount you're applying to one patient. So let's say you've received a check for $3,000. Once I hit the save button, again, that check is already recorded into the system. So whether or not I continue on to distribute it, I do not have to repost that check. I simply have to go in and find it and edit it and continue to distribute. I'm gonna answer this question as a no. Do I want to distribute the payment now? And I do want to show you that if I click Find Unapplied Deposits, that $3,000 check is going to show up there. That is because nobody has received any credit for this $3,000 check, so it's unapplied to your patient's accounts. However, if we go to the report section and open up your deposit slip by double-clicking on it, we'll go ahead and just put today's dates in this space. That $3,000 check is recorded as a check that you've received so far, even though it has not been distributed to any patients. One other thing I want to point out is that if I go to today's day sheet, which is a total of all transactions that have been applied to a patient's ledger, you do not see any part of that check payment listed here. That is because only the items that are actually on the ledger attached to charges or that are charges are going to show up on your day sheet. So the day sheet is for applied charges and applied payments, applied charges, applied payments, and applied adjustments. The deposit slip is for any applied or unapplied monies that you've posted. So backing up to our payment screen, here is our unapplied deposit of $3,000. I can click edit on that item and go ahead and hit distribute at this point to choose what patient I want to distribute money to. You'll notice this section is pretty much blank because it's waiting to populate the patient's data based on the patient you choose from your patient list. Now I can take the $3,000 and apply it where we need to for this patient. For example, let's say of this $3,000 check, only $40 is going to our George Clooney. I'm going to go ahead and post payments in this case instead of post and close 
The difference is post and close is going to close your EOB entry screen. If I just hit post payments, it records one claim marked as paid. It removes that $40 from the total of the check that I have left to distribute, and it lets me choose my next patient to continue on to distribute the rest of this bulk check. And that is how we post a bulk check. But at the end of all of your patients on that EOB, you do want to make sure unposted amount says zero and previously posted says 3,000 before you close the screen and call it done for the day. Once you close the screen, again, this is a great way to double check yourself. The payment amount you said that you received the check for is $3,000. You do have money here in the unapplied amount, which means you did not finish distributing that check. So the payment amount should be 3,000, the total of the check, and the unapplied amount should say zero. That's how you can double check yourself and make sure that you did completely post the entire check. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the payment screen so we're not just looking at unapplied deposits, but we're looking at all deposits. You can search through the payment screen by insurance code, by description, which is patient copay, patient check payment, etc., by date, or by the ID number. We can also customize our filter here in this screen and search based on check number, payment method, and original amount, which is the total amount of the check, and any of these other additional options. Personally, I really like searching by check number. So if I want to find a particular check number and don't know what day it got posted to, I can type in that check number here and it shows me the only check that pertains to that check number. And then I know what date it went to. If I edit this item, it's going to show me the patient that that money got applied to. Don't forget, you can also customize the view in this screen if you'd like to add check number here as well. Feel free to do so in addition to any of these other items that may be pertinent. So original amount of the check and unapplied amount of the check could be really handy. In most cases, you want the unapplied amount to be zero. Now I wanna move on to our claim screen. So just for the sake of keeping the system running its top efficiency, I'm gonna to go to File and Close All Screens. That empties out anything that I had opened previously, takes me back to my home page, and now I can jump to the claim screen. Once you're in the claim screen, I do wanna point out that you can create claims in bulk instead of per patient. And to do so, I go to my Options menu and click Create Claims or Create Institutional Claims if you are doing those. It'll tell me how many transactions are eligible to be created on a claim and how many claims we've created. I do not wish to view the claims, so I'm going to say no. The claims that say that they are ready to bill are the claims that will either print or send electronically when you click print claims or send e-claims. If I want to see just my ready to bill claims a little more quickly, up here at the top of the screen for primary claims status, I just choose ready to bill. Now I can filter out my other claim statuses and focus in on the ones that I know are going to be sent when I hit the print or send button. If for some reason I only wanted to print or send one of these claims, all I have to do is select the one so it's blue and click print selected claim or send selected e-claim. You can select multiple claims by holding your control button down on your keyboard and then highlighting all the claims you wish to send. Click once again print selected claim and send selected e-claim, leaving off whatever you do not have highlighted in blue. You do have other statuses that you can filter by here, so if I want to see all my paid claims, these are claims that we received payment for and posted under new insurance payment and adjustment on that line item. Build claims are the ones that have been sent and have not had payment received yet on them. Failed claims are the items that are missing some component of information and therefore have not been sent out to the insurance company yet. If you want to know what the system is looking for in order to fail a claim, you can go to the Setup button and modify claim pre-edits. These are all the criteria that the system is looking for in order to pass your claim. So we do have the initial scrubbing process that will double check and make sure you have your patient's name and date of birth and the basic information on there before you spend time and energy sending that claim off to the clearinghouse. 
the clearinghouse you use will also scrub your claim on a higher level for additional information that you may be missing based on the codes that you use and other criteria that the clearinghouse judges those claims by before passing it to the insurance company. So our system does have an initial scrubbing process built in so that it does save you money when sending those claims to make sure you don't send a bad claim out. We also have a suspended claim status, which is basically a holding tank for your claims. So if I knew for whatever reason that this claim needed some additional information, such as injury date or illness date, I can put the claim on hold until I have it. To do so, I'm going to double click the claim, go to the billing tab of the claim, and change the status to suspend and save my changes. Now if I look at my suspended claims, I can see that this one is on hold. Our claim forms are editable, however keep in mind that whatever data you change on the claim form does not change the data inside of the system. If you do change the data inside the system and then update your claim, it does change the claim form. So this is one directional as far as where the information travels. The items that you cannot change directly on the claim form are the details of the transaction specifically. This information, such as the fee you're charging, is getting pulled specifically from the transaction code on the patient's ledger. So if you find that you have the wrong fee here, for example, you can go click on ledger, click to change the fee and type in the new fee that you'd like, save the transaction, and we'll close the screen to get back to our claim and click update claim. Now the system will take a moment to update. It tells you claim number five has been updated and it has gone ahead and changed that dollar amount for us. The other information, such as tax ID numbers, demographic information for the patient, that data you can click and type. For example, I can change the sex from male to female. I can change the relationship status here. All of this information I can click and type. But keep in mind that does not update the patient's data inside of their patient information screen. It only changes it on this interactive claim right before you send it out. So I can save my changes here, and now our interactive claim is edited. As you can see, it did keep the number five that I attached in the patient's address field. If you do need to change something on the patient demographic or the insurance information, you can get there quickly by clicking on the billing tab and selecting the patient's name or the insurance company's name and jump directly to that screen. So there is quick links built throughout the system to help you get where you need to go quickly. So here I can simply click and type my changes save my changes and then it takes me back to the claim information, update my claim, and now it's pulling data from your patient's information screen and updating the claim with that instead of you clicking and typing directly on the claim. The most efficient way to make changes are to go directly to the source of where you need to change that data. The claim is simply a reflection of the data that's throughout the system in other places. Coming back to our claims list, I want to go ahead and choose print claims and I want to show you that you do have the option to choose what type of claim you'd like to print. If you are sending a primary claim, make sure you choose the CMS 1500 primary claim form. If you're printing the secondary claim, make sure you choose secondary and same for tertiary. The data on the claim form in the different positions, such as multiple insurance companies, will not swap places until you select the appropriate claim form here and hit the print button. So keep in mind if you double click this claim and you try to visually view the secondary claim information, you're not going to see it until you choose the secondary format of that CMS claim form. So we're going to go ahead once again to print claims. I'm going to choose primary. We will print preview these items and it does not track the item as actually printed until you hit your printer icon. Once you do so, you do get an option. Once you do so, you do get the option to mark these claims as printed. This is what's going to change the status of the claim from ready to bill to build. So now I'm going to just delete my primary claim status so I can see all. So we've got our two paid claims here and now we have our two billed claims here. 
Once again, if you needed to resubmit one of these build claims for whatever reason, you're going to double click the claim, go to the billing tab, and change the status back to ready to bill and save your changes. Now it's ready to go once again when you click send e-claims or print claims. You do have a number of other searchable options or filter options up here at the top. You can filter by claim number, you can filter by name on the claim, and you can filter based on the patient's billing number, the type of transaction, and the status of the secondary claim. Keep in mind the customized view and customized filter options are over here in the options menu, so you can play with this and add anything additional that you'd like. You also have a space to choose a specific date range to view your claims in. We also have the option to hide our paid claims just with the click of the button so you're not focusing on the ones that have already been taken care of. And then you have some default search options down here at the bottom as well that you could choose such as billing number and off to the left you would punch in the billing number of the claim. Instead of getting rid of these other claims, this default search option simply points to the item that you specified. I do want to point out that I did customize my view and added the timely filing section to my claim screen. And this is really handy to know when your deadline for sending these claims are. If I jump forward in time, to less than 30 days before my timely filing date. I want to point out that all of the pertinent claims that still need to get sent or paid turn purple in this screen. So it's giving you a warning that you may want to focus on getting these claims out or making sure that they're getting paid before the timely filing date approaches. If I jump to the timely filing date in the future and go to January 5th, we have one item that turns red, and that's a really clear indicator that you need to get this claim out today or else you risk losing the opportunity to build that under the timely filing time range. The item will continue to stay red from this point forward because we are at our last opportunity to send it or perhaps it's already past due. I'm going to go ahead and take my calendar back to today's date and show you that these claims turn black once again because we're not in the danger zone yet. So black means you've got time to submit the claim. Purple is going to be a warning that you're getting close to the date for timely filing and red means that it is the date for timely filing or you've passed the date for timely filing. So please do pay attention to those colors when you go to your claim screen. I'm going to go ahead and change the status of all of these claims to build to show that we did actually send them out already. That's going to conclude this video and in the next video we'll pick up under reports, sending statements in bulk, running day sheets, and other important tracking reports that we've got. And we will take a look at some EHR and additional functions as well. Thank you!